watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. Hey folks, if you missed a tour of my bug out moto van, click below to watch now. I'm leaving RNK Parking Camp. And uh, I had a great stay here, and I highly recommend this place. Now it's time to hit the road. I'm getting ready to head back to Ohio. There's beautiful mountains there, Pikes Peak. All right, time to hit the road, Jack. It's been fun, but it's time to get back home. I'm gonna miss the mountains. Absolutely beautiful. Was riding up in the mountains. Look at this, got a fucking screw in the tire, man. Fuck. Luckily, the tire is still good, though. It's not deflating or anything. I don't care, man. I got to make it back to my van. I'll try to pull it out. It may have not have uh, punctured deep enough to get to the uh, tire. I don't know. I hope not. I hope it's just like the knob part. We'll see, though. I'm going to leave it there for now. But uh, in this video, I'm going to take you to my my old house, my old hood, and tell you a story about how I turned it into a ghetto. <sighs> well, not me, but because of my actions, it turned into a ghetto. All right, this is my old neighborhood. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. It looked like they cleaned it up since the last time I came here. But this was my house right here, right on the corner. Let me take a look here on the side. Hey, it looks nice. It looks a lot better than the last time I was here. See, it had a nice mountain view from my uh, top floor of my house. Kind of sat on a a hill. Let me see here. Oh, they got like a little shed there. I wonder if my neighbors are still the same neighbors. Right here. This is my house that I sold. I made a very nice profit off of this house. But anyways, I'm going to tell you. Hold on, I want to see if my neighbor's still here. He's still the... I should knock on his door and see if he's still there. He, I had the coolest neighbor, man. That guy, when I was selling my house, he uh, he brought he, he brought me out a, a rib dinner because I was busting my ass renovating the house by myself. And he was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you, hook you up with a rib dinner and some beans and he brought over the best fucking ribs but anyways guys actually it, it doesn't look as this neighborhood doesn't look as ghetto as it did the last time I was out here they must have cleaned it up I had some tenants I had to uh, get back to Ohio on business and I didn't have time to sell my house and I rented my house out I and I went with section 8 tenants and the reason I went with section 8 tenants because they were paying well the uh, city and it was straight payment from the city no bullshit I, had, I went with section 8 tenants because I didn't have anybody I didn't want to pay anybody to keep up with my house because you know I'm cheap and, you know as far as a manager rental manager so I said fuck it I'll do section 8 I'll get paid every month they fuck up the house then I'll you know have it fixed up and I'll write it off on my taxes so I got the, the first couple uh, first couple that came, it was actually a single mother and her child, and uh, I passed her up because I felt like she was going to put me, uh, she was going to end up calling me all the time to have people fix shit. And then, so I passed on her and I went with this other couple. They came in all dressed up in their Sunday's best. And I mean, they, they were sharp as a tack. Probably just came from church. Talked a good game, spoke well, and uh, the guy said, hey man, I'm handy around the house, I will never call you for anything, I can do all the repairs, anything, I said, dude, I'll take it, you guys are, you know, and uh, they were Section 8 tenants, and uh, so, 
I rented a house out for a couple of years and uh, I came back at the second year I told them I was canceling the contract and I they and they uh, you know they left but I, I came out here I drove fucking 20 out 17 hours straight from Ohio here to Colorado uh, Springs and I opened the door to my house and what did I see my house was tore up from the fucking floor up man broken window fucking uh smashed in garage looked like they fucking took a shit on the walls they had that somebody left the water running on the bottom floor it was three inches of water and uh three inches of fucking water man and uh, all I could do was just sit down and put my my hands on my face and just I just oh man I was just so fucking pissed off and then I tried to find out where they were and they they were slick tried to be slick about it they had the section 8 people and everybody would not give out their new address and I said that's fucked up man they tore my house up and I can't find these fuckers but anyways I went to the section 8 office I pled with them to give me their new address and uh the guy the the president or whatever the lead person and and uh with the section 8 tenant housing he came to me he said he he passed me a slip of paper with their new address he said i hope you get those fuckers and uh so what i did i filed court papers had them uh and then i had to get them served that was the tough part so what i did i had my buddy dress up in a in a delivery outfit like look he made him look like a ups guy and i had we we made up a package and everything and put the the slip inside <laughs> he showed up and uh and i knew where she was from louisiana so i had them put i told them to put the uh the address of uh, louisiana on there some fake address we came up i actually i think i did some research and i found out her parents address and i put it down on the package and she said uh, the son answered the door and they they said it was a package and he said who's it from and he said from such and such from Louisiana and she said woo mama done sent me something and uh, he gave the package to her and he opened it up and he said you have been served and her son was like ah he got your ass <laughs> I'll pay I, me and my buddy were laughing about that shit it was funny as hell man but we I was able to get those bastards to court and I won but I tell you guys, I renovated that house myself, man. Oh, by the way, let me get back to the neighbor. When I first came back, the neighbors came up to me and they said, Why did you rent that house out to the pieces of shit, man? He said, Those bastards played rap music at fucking four o'clock in the, like five or six o'clock in the morning, blasting, and their sons would lift weights with a weight bench out in the front yard. And they used to have gang initiations in the front yard, and uh, and they they spray painted Crips on the um, the street sign, and the son actually had beat the the mayor of Colorado Springs' son up or something like that, and he was in jail. It was just all fucked up, man. And then they had all their other buddies that were on Section Eight. They came in the neighborhood, renting up the houses, and the ho whole neighborhood turned into a fucking shithole, man turn into the ghetto and not, not all section 8 people are going to be trash guys by the way you know I'm not saying that but the ones they brought were absolute fucking thugs and fucking just low lifes they were breaking in people's houses they were spray painting shit it was just fucked up vandalized I mean they just were tearing up the neighborhood man so they it looks like they cleaned it all up they must have got rid of all those bastards but it all started with me renting that my house out to that fucking section section eight tenant, and uh, and her heathen ass kids. And man, I worked so I never worked so hard in my life renovating that house. I tell you guys, I was up from the crack of dawn to the fucking till fucking three o'clock in the morning working non-stop cleaning scrubbing shit i did most of the work myself except for lay carpet i even they even busted down the fence post i had to put in a new fence post and that was the hardest job because the the uh 
the ground is like fucking cement here in Colorado, man. And uh, so that was a pain in the ass. Everything was just, I lost like 15 pounds renovating that fucking house, man. I'll tell you, that was, but I made a sick profit off of it though, so I can't complain about it. And uh, it all worked out in the end. But I'll tell you guys, I never, if I ever, I'm never going to rent nothing out again. I don't ever want to rent any deal with that. I know you can make good money, you know, getting, uh, you know, uh, income, rental income every month. But fuck that. It's a pain in the ass dealing with tenants. You know, yeah, you're going to have some good tenants here and there. You're going to have some bad tenants in there. But when you get the bad ones... It just is fucking a horrible experience that you got to take time off to go to court. It's just a pain, you know, it's just a pain in the fucking ass. I don't want to deal with no rental properties anymore. Fuck that. I don't care if you make money or nothing. I'd rather not deal with the stress. But yeah, I single-handedly turned my whole neighborhood into a fucking ghetto. But on a positive note, looks like they cleaned it all up. And it's all good again, it looks like. I'm sure there's a few ghetto ones sprinkled here and there, though. But anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Signing off from Colorado, baby. Rocky Mountains for that Rocky Mountain High. Deuces. Hey, guys, we're here in Concordia, Missouri. I'm on my way back home, staying at this rest stop here. And uh, looks like it should be okay. It even has a pet area here that I can take the dog to go take a shit. All right, hit the sack, eat a little meal, hit the sack, and then hit the road tomorrow. I think uh, just waking up here, it's about, what was it, 9.53 in the morning here in Missouri. I'm at a rest stop. I heard all this noise. I was like, what the fuck is all this, these, uh, sound like a riot going on outside. And luckily I got my cameras. I put up my TV here, and uh, it's just a, a charter bus here. And it had a bunch of kids on it, making a lot of racket. And, uh, but damn, I thought it was like a riot going on outside or something. Woke me up. I'm waking up late as usual, man. I got to get my ass on the road. But, uh, yeah, these cameras come in real handy, man. Because you can, obviously, you can't see shit here because there's no windows. And I don't have to peep out of, out of the curtain or anything. I can just pull out my TV. See what's going on out there. See, as you can see there, the top quadrant there, which is the front window, that's the charter bus. Good, get their asses out of here, man. Shit, making too much fucking noise, man. I'm trying to sleep, man. <laughs> All right, dude, let me get up. It's time to get up. Get back on the road. Well guys, this concludes the bug out trip. I'm at home now and I drove a total of 3,110.2 miles all the way from Cleveland, Ohio to the mountains, Rocky Mountains of Colorado and back home. Wow. It was fun. What can I say? It was fun. And, uh, but I'm, I'm glad to not be driving anymore. <laughs> My lower back is killing me and I'm ready to soak in the tub. Well, all right, it's been fun. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Deuces. Welcome to Psycho Cruises Click the Go links. Just click on the pictures below to go to my recommended videos and my social media sites. Also, don't forget to visit my blog and store at psychocruiser.com. If you have any trouble clicking on these links, they are also provided in the info section of this video. Thank you and subscribe today.
Guys, check out my new channel where I talk about anything and everything, not just motorcycle related. Psycho Cruiser Motor Vlog.